verse. You go get this verse. You go get this verse. You go get this verse. The law is the life. You go get this verse. You go get this verse. You go get this verse. So when God sent these people against us, he said, they're going to put a yoke of iron upon your necks. Until when? Come on. Until he has destroyed me. Many of our people give Abraham Lincoln a credit for taking iron off our necks and slavery. But when did the Most High God say those chains and eyes will be removed? Read it again. Until he has destroyed me. When they have destroyed us. Then, and only then, it don't matter who the president was. It don't matter who was in office. God said, when we are destroyed, then the iron will come off our neck. That's right. Then and only then. Y'all celebrating Lincoln's birthday. What did he do? He only carried out the most high God's word. That's right. Bring That's it out. It. Sis, you understand that? When we were destroyed, the power was destroyed the people. What destroyed us? How were we destroyed? Slave. Okay, now, when we came here, what we called African Americans? What was our God giving you? Go to, go, to, go, to verse, go to verse 1. Because you won't find African Americans here. You won't find Negro. You won't find uh, Puerto Rican, Jamaican, Haitian. You won't find none of those in there. So we have to come back and find what did the Most High God call us? Because when he come back, he ain't going to call you African American. When he said Christ, Christ ain't going to greet you like that. And we can prove it. That's right. You won't, you won't prove that Christ is not going to greet you like that? Go to, um, go to John 1, 40, 47. Come on, let's see this mission. We, we're gonna have proof that Christ is not gonna greet us as African Americans, Mexicans, Haitians, none of those garbage out because our out. slave masters gave it to us. Come on, John chapter 1, verse 47. Uh, Jesus saw Nathaniel. So Jesus saw a man. You understand? Come on. Coming to him. So Jesus saw this man walking to him. Read. And says to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed. What did, how did Christ greet this man? Come on. Behold, an Israelite indeed. When Christ comes back, he's not going to call you no dog or African American. That's right. You are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's, That's right. right. You understand that? Read it again from the top. To prove. Look how Christ is going to acknowledge you. And I pray our brothers and sisters repent so that when Christ comes back, he acknowledges you that way. You understand? Read. John chapter 1, verse 47. Come on. Jesus saw Nathaniel <laughs> coming to him and says to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed. An Israelite indeed. That's, what, that's the name the Most High God gave us. So Christ called us by the name his Father gave us, man. Read. And whom is no guile. There is no God. There's no trickery. Some of our people, it's nothing but the hustling, y'all. That's right. Bring it you out. You understand? Right. All you want to do is hustle your people. Come get over on your people. But when Christ greeted this Israelite, he said, look, here's an Israelite with no guile in him, man. Give me, um, you have that sign. You have that sign. You have that sign. 
sister, who are you on this side? I want you to be with the left side. And tell me who you are according to the side. Are you, are you American black? African American black. So you know you are from the tribe of Judah. According to the Bible, you are a Jew that You understand? You are from the same lineage that Jesus the Christ came from. That's right. You understand? That should be a pleasure to your ears. For you to hear that. You are from the same lineage as the Messiah. You understand? So in being so, there's certain things required of us as a people. As you know when you're from the tribe of Judah. As knowing you're an Israelite. As knowing how Christ is going to greet you when you come back. That's right. There are things that are required of you. You understand, sister? Because what? When Christ comes back, yeah, sister, because we're, we're going to bring out some of the requirements that are required of our people. As we read earlier, these are the things that keep us on the bottom. These are the things that keep us in captivity, that keep our people on the lonely side of society. That's right. That keep us in the AIDS clinics that keep us in the hospitals needing some kind of rehabilitation, man. You must come back to your true nationality. You blacks and Hispanics, you are the children of Israel. That's right. Don't let them lie to you anymore. You understand? You are God's chosen people. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Come on. Neither should a man put on a woman's garment. Read the second part of that. So we get the clear understanding of what they're talking about in the first part. Come on. Neither should a man put on a woman's garment. So, a man shall not put on a woman's garment. What are some women's garments, sister? Nikki, what are some women's garments? I mean, yeah, that men would wear. Bras, what else? Garments, garments. What are garments? Makeup or not garments, sis? What about a dress? Yeah, that too. So men are not supposed to wear dresses. So your Tyler Perry's that you revere so much in Christianity. Bring it out, huh? Your Tyler Perry's are the bop. Re and in fact, read, after, read the second part and read the end of it. Come on. Neither should a man put on a woman's garment. Come on. For all that do so. All that do so. Are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. It's so funny how Christianity worships, then they worships a man that's an abomination unto the Most High God. Isn't that funny? You know why? Because Christianity is backwards. That's, that's right. Christianity is of the devil. That's right. That's right. You understand? Right. It is of the devil. And we can prove that all day long. As a matter of fact, we will prove that today. Bring it out, huh? You understand? Uh, you Hold on. Read that first part again so the sister can get that as she departs. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So, we know what pertains to a woman, to a woman that a man shouldn't wear is dresses. Right? So what do women wear that pertaineth to a man? Somebody help me. Nobody. All your years in the Christian church, you can't tell me what a woman wears that pertains to a man. I'll give you the answer. Pants. Read the whole thing again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. These are not our words. This Bible is in many of your pocketbooks right now. This Bible app is in many of your phones right now. But the Bible says a woman is not to wear pants and a man is not to wear dresses. Period. Either you're going to hearken unto the Most High God's word, or you're going to forbear it. And forbearing it for this long has kept us all in this condition. That's right. This, this condition we're in is because we've been forbearing the God, God's Most High God's laws, man. You understand? So what do we do after this? What do we do? Many of you will not repent after hearing this. Many of you will not convert. What do you do after hearing this? We're not going to leave you broken down. You got to go and throw all your pants away without giving you the remedy for it. You understand? Because you're not doing this to please man. That's right. Hold that you. Hold your regulations one and ten as well. 
because the, the spirit that you should have in serving the Lord is also in this Bible. That's right. Many of you think because you clap your hands, have a song and dance, do a hamana shamana hanana 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 in church, that you're doing something. The Most High God don't hear those loud noises. That's right. Because what? You won't keep commandment one. That's right. The church is filled with men with clean shaven beds, you know? bald heads, right. eating pork after church for, uh, for, uh, for um, breaking the Lord's Sabbath day. These, all these things happen in your churches, man. Read that. What do I do? Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. Come on. For do I now persuade men or God? Come on. Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. That's right. So you call yourself Christians, which I guess means disciples of Christ, right? Right? So what you're doing by wearing those pants is pleasing men. Because a lot of y'all wear the tight pants to catch a man. You ain't pleasing God because God's word just came out and said it's forbidden for a woman to wear pants. That's it's right. forbidden for a man to wear dresses. So who are you pleasing? You're pleasing your own lustful desires. You understand? But the spirit you should have just came out of the scripture. You should desire to please God and not man. That's right. Read it again. Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. If you please men, you are not the servant of Christ. That's right. That's what the Bible says. So how many of you women will repent and start wearing dresses? How many of you? How many of you men will stop going home and putting on your mama's dresses? How many of you? Think of you Martin Lawrence or Tyler Perry or that garbage, man. The black man always want to entertain and be entertained. But nobody want to do what the Most High God said. But understand this. You prepare Most High God's word. When Christ return, you will be put to death. That's right. right. Period. Let me ask you Come on. Because some of us have this Bible where none of you understand it. You only understand what the preacher tells you. Jumping up saying, my pastor said, my pastor said, we bring these scriptures out, you give us a doggone gospel song. Mm, bring it out, huh? We don't want to hear what Kirk Franklin said. We don't want to hear what Donnie McClurkin said. That's right, bring it out. We want to hear what the Most High God said. That's right. Come on, read that. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 8 Come on. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly So the men before you read in the book of the, of the, of the law distinctly These men study this Bible man day and night The most I gave these men in front of you the men down the street understanding of this Bible Something your wicked pastors can't do man Because they are the devil man Come on so they read in the book of the law of God distinctly. Come on. And gave the sense. And did what? And gave the sense. Because some of you might have heard that scripture. I didn't know who was talking about a woman shouldn't wear pants. You had no clue. You had no clue you were in Israelite. You had no clue you're from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin on the Ephah, Issachar, Manasseh, Ephraim. You had no idea you were from the tribe of Simeon. But the most high God. Gave the men in front of you to understand of this Bible, man. To come forth and deliver it to the people. Read it. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly. Come on. And gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And caused our people, the, pe the people of this son, to understand the word of God. To understand what is required of you of God. To understand why you're in these conditions. That's what the Most High God is dealing with us with. That's what the Most High God put into our spirits. You understand? To come forth and teach our people. We're not supposed to get this understanding and stay at home and keep it to ourselves. 
It's our very treasure. We're to come and wake our people up through the spirit of the most high. But y'all don't want to hear that. Y'all dying for us to be the doggone cue dogs and start stepping for y'all. Bring it out, right? Start doing some kind of dance, claiming some kind of fraternity. We claiming the most high God. That's right. He is righteous son Christ. That's right. Nothing else. Read. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1. Come on. Cry aloud. To what? Cry aloud. What does that mean? It means to exalt your voice. We're going to show you how. Come on. Cry aloud. Spare not. We're not supposed to spare anybody's feelings. We're not here to sugarcoat the word for you. You know why? You got your wicked demonic pastors to do that for you. We're here to give you the sense of the word. You understand? Come on. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Do what? Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. So, not only are we to give you the word, but we're to exalt our voice so that everybody hears it. That everybody's edified. You understand? Your, 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 um, your preferable dollars, your, your Joel Osteen's, they speak like little children. But the Most High God told us, according to the Bible, to exalt our voice loud as a trumpet so that everyone can hear. You understand? And that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to give you this word. But why are, we, why are we exalting our voice to give you this word? The Most High God commanded us to do something. Come on. Cry aloud. Stand not. Come on. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Come on. And show my people their transgression. Show them what? Show my people their transgression. Come on. And the house of Jacob their sins. We're supposed to show our brothers their sins. The sister was here. We showed her that it's a sin to be in pants. That's right. We're showing you the reason why you're on the bottom is because of sins. We're showing you the reason why you're in single parent households is because of sins. The reason why you live in the ghettos and slums is because of your sins. That's right. The reason why you are the highest AIDS and STD rate is because of your sins. That's right. That's why we're here. So that you can correct yourself. Get off of those drugs. Stop drinking yourself into a doggone coma. That's right. Bring it out. Stop it. Repent. Come back to the most high God's moral statutes and commandment with faith in his holy and righteous son, man. That's what we need to do to repent as a nation, man. As a people. We were not brought over here in captivity one by one. One every so our days. No, we were brought over here as a nation of people. Therefore, you must re repent in the same manner. We were once like you on the other side of these uh, signs, man. We were once like you. But we had to change, man. We had to change if we wanted to see change. Y'all think mar mar marching with Al Sharpton is bringing change? Some of y'all been marching. Y'all, some of y'all have marched with Martin Luther King. And y'all marched the other day with Trayvon Martin. Y'all been marching for how many years? So now, we're giving you the remedy according to the Bible. That's right. We ain't telling you to march a damn place. You understand? Because marching ain't do nothing then, and marching won't do a doggone thing now. That's right. You understand? Read it. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Come on. Cry aloud. Come on. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. We're here to show you your sins so you can correct yourself. How can you repent if you don't know what you're doing wrong? How can you repent? You can't. If, you, if you're at home as a child and your mother puts you on punishment, didn't she tell you what you did wrong? She just, she just told you to stand in the corner for no reason. She gave you a spanking for no reason. She took away your stuff for no reason. You must know what you've done wrong so you don't do it again. That's not hard to understand, people. If y'all can understand, if anyone has anything to say, please 
Don't be afraid to stand in front of the men in front of you. Don't be afraid. But you're not afraid of us. You're afraid of the word of God. That's right. Because the word of God shows you how wicked you really are. That's right. This is the only book that can show you how wicked you are. The doggone um, Quran can't show you that. Kabbalah can't show you that. Buddhism can't show you that. Bring it out, Rock. Hinduism can't show you that. But the word of the Most High God of Israel, His word can show you that. You're going to give your understanding of His word. Because many of you, many of you, hear this word and you reject it. But we don't care. We're here to do the most high God's word, not to win friendships. Come on. They think you chapter 2, verse 7. Come on. And so, thou shalt so speak my word unto them. Me off the train by whether they, by they will hear or whether they will forbear. The most high God said, Go unto his people and tell them his word, whether they're going to listen or reject it. You understand? Come on. Because if y'all don't see the state of your people, you're blind as hell. We're going to show you what the Most High God did to our people. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. Come on. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. You shall what? The Lord shall smite thee with madness. Y'all are bearing witness to madness right here in front of us. That's right. That's madness. Who did the Most High God, I mean the Most High God, smite our people with madness? Why? Because you refuse to keep his law, statutes, and commandments. That's right. Tomorrow, one of you at the bus stop might wake your man. That's right. And you don't have to question what is happening to me. Don't ask that question. Because we're showing you who you makes you a nut job. You we're showing you who made you smitten with madness, man. Come on. Who did it again? Who did the it? Lord shall smite thee with madness. The Lord smite you with madness, brother. The Lord did it. The Lord is doing it. The Most High does all things. That's right. And we're going to prove that according to the Bible. Like I said, like the scripture said, we're going to give you sense and understanding of this word. Something you don't get in your churches. Something you will not get in your school systems. And most of us do not get it at home. But today you're going to get it. You're going to get the full understanding. Come on. Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. This one I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. There is there any that can deliver out of my hand. The most high God said, No man can deliver you out of his hand. So if the most high God wants to smite you with madness, guess what? You're going to be smitten with madness. That's right. Bring it out, huh? If the Most High God said, when he sends his son back, he's going to destroy you, you better believe he's going to destroy you. That's right. The Most High God's word endureth forever. He does all things. But, the, but you know what? When you find out why you're stricken in your body with certain things, why you're stricken in your mind, it never crosses your mind. Maybe I need to change. Exactly. Maybe I need to repent for my wicked ways. Maybe I need to stop being a whoremonger. That's sleeping right. with every woman in my neighborhood. That's right. Maybe I need to stop being a whore. Sleeping with every man in my neighborhood. Maybe I need to stop that. Maybe women need to stop having an exalted authority over my over men. That's right. Bring it out. Maybe huh? you should stop doing that. Change your ways, man. Read it again. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill 
and I'll make it live. Many of you think it's the devil that does all the bad things on the earth. And you think God does only the good. Read that again. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make it live. Did you know that the most high God kills? Were you ever given that scripture in church? Never. Were you given that scripture, brother? Did you know most high God is the one who kills and decides who lives? We don't know the basic things. I hear Christians say it all the time. Something happens, oh, the devil's alive. The devil this, the devil that. Y'all give everybody the credit except the most high God. Bring it out, huh? His word says he does all things. Let me ask you something. Why is it that in Islam, many, many of them say how they read the Bible as well. That Allah is with God. Read that again. See now that I, even I, am He, and there is no God with me. So God is saying, your dog God Allah is alive. That's right. 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 He said there is no God with him. So where your Allah coming to this? Read it again. See now that I, even I, am He. And there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. There, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy father had known, even wood and stone. So the Most High God said, you're going to serve other gods. <laughs> Who is those other gods? Is Allah? Is that, is that so-called Caucasian image of Christ? That's another God. That image of Christ is nowhere in the Bible. That many of our people were breastfed on, were force fed from infants. Other gods we will serve of what? Even wood and stone. What rep what represents wood? It's your Christian crosses. Yes, right. Bring it out. The Christianity that you serve is not of the Bible. That's right. right. When will you understand that? I'm going to say it again in case someone missed it. The Christianity you serve is not of the Bible.